Going on YouTube, Clover Bloods here back with another Scarlet Violet video. And today I want to do another spotlight video. And I've chosen Weavile because I think right now it's it, it can actually do something. So if you remember Jamie Boyd from a few regionals ago, he actually used Weavile on his Arkeladen Rain team. And it was actually a pretty cool set. Uh, if you look, if you remember, it was something like this. It had Ice Spinner, uh, it had Knockoff, and wow, my Ks are, are really broken here. Knockoff, and then it also had uh, beat up and that was really good uh, with the Arkeladen uh, ring team that he had over there Okay, and I think Weavile is even better now than it was then just because of how much More NDD males are running around because of you know, the psychic terrain stuff along with the opposing Sneezer, so I think because of this uh, I think it has a, an even better benefit because if you remember the speed of Weavile base 125 Okay, then you look at Sneezer base 120, you actually outspeed the Sneezler. Okay, now that being said, of course, Sneezer can always go uh, with these, you know, Psychic Seeds ideas, you know, with the Unburdened Boost. Yes, we understand that. Okay, but that means no Sash for you. And that means I get to still keep my Sash here. And that goes a long way when you get to live for a turn and the Sneezer does not. And uh, not only that, you are a Dark type. And that means no expanding force shenanigans coming from this Ndidi. And you get to threaten with either the knockoff or the ice spinner into the Ndidi slot here. Now, also, uh, if you don't want to do the beat up set, you can definitely still do something like fake out, right? Don't forget, Weavile still gets fake out. And if this Sneezer also has a fake out, not necessarily even in the psychic terrain, if you're just going against another Sneezer in general, you have the faster fake out. And you can use that to your advantage against the opposing Sneezler. And then, not only that, you also get a priority Ice Shard if you also want to go this route. And that's really good against stuff like Dragonite. So you get to break a potential multi-scale. Uh, you, you also do a lot of damage, right? Because you are an Ice-type Dragonite being four times weak. Unless it wants to tear it if it's, uh, you know, all Sash is already broken. Not Sash. The multi-scale is already broken. Uh, and that is another weapon that you can pose against some of these Doug teams. So, like, again, if I put Doug on the screen... Okay, we got Dragonite, we've got Ursaluna, and we also have the Goldengo here. Look at this. Look how interesting Weavile matches up into these Doug teams, right? And Ursaluna is expected to do really well in the next couple of regionals. But you just pressure it uh, with not only Ice Spinner, okay, super effective damage, but you also threaten knockoff because a lot of these Ursalunas, they're some of them are Terra Ghosts. And, you know, they don't want to take a fighting move, but then they're, they're just weak to a dark move in the Weavile. You also get to knock off the Assault Vest, and that's important because then you get to expose the Ursaluna. It's no longer able to protect. It doesn't have a Life for Protect set, so you can do that. Same thing over here. Like, Weavile, you can even, if you don't even want to click the Ice move into Dragonite, you can click Knock Off and stop the Dragonite from, you know, uh, remove the, the loaded dice. So now it can't click its Scale Shot anymore. It's just going to do uh, random hit two to five times so you can use that against you and then at the same time again goldango being weak to dark type you can click knock off into the goldango and one shot it you are a dark type after all you can you, you can use your dark stab moves into it so like it's very interesting just how uh weavile as a dark ice type can match into these things then you have other stuff like you know amoongus uh, you, know, the, you know, the Rillaboom stuff. And then you can also do some pretty big damage there. Blow up Rillaboom's terrain. Do super effective damage to it with the Ice Spinner. Same thing with Amoongus. And don't forget about Pickpocket, okay? One thing that's really cool about Pickpocket is, again, if you consume your item already, right? If you have no more Sash and you're hit by a contact move, you get to steal that item. And we have a battle that we can showcase where we did just exactly that. But imagine like an Arkeladen clicking body press into this Weavile, you get to just take that item, right? And that's kind of funny uh, when you think about it. An Arkeladin without an Assault Vest uh, is is a very sad Arkeladin, right? So that that's pretty cool. Like, it, you know, the, the fact that this thing, you know, even though it's not going to like break the meta by any means, the fact that it can do something right now uh, just goes to show you that, again, we can still find niche Pokemon even at this point in the meta that can still make all the difference on uncertain teams, right? So, you know, Dark Ice Time, again, really good. Um, and just looking at some other stuff, like I said, you can go the beat up stuff if you want to put this on your Arkeladen Ray team. We already talked about that. Uh, but overall, I think Weavile can really do something on, you know, even like on a Doug team, right? And I think that's that's two ways to really run it. 
I think you can even slap Weavile onto, you know, these Doug teams. You know, normally they would have a Sneezer, but if you have your own Weavile, I definitely think it could do something. So we could build a team around that. Or you could definitely just do something like this, where you have the Arkeladen Rain idea uh, with Pelipper, and then also build around Goldango, right? Goldango loves to be on these Arkeladen Rain teams. So I think you could even do something like this and make good use of Weavile, especially whether you go beat up or fake out. Either way, you know, Goldango and Arkeladen are gonna enjoy that uh, because you can activate stamina or you can set up fake out and enable uh, or create space where the Goldango can set up a, a nasty plot idea. So lots of different cores. Uh, I should say mainly two cores that are really good with Weavile right now. And I can show you that for sure because again, if you go into the lab mouse data, I think Weavile uh, is mainly on those two types of teams, right? And I don't really see it outside of that. But again, it is a niche Pokemon, but uh, it's a niche uh, that can be useful right now at this point uh, as we head into the region. So let's take a look at some lab mouse data and let's confirm our, our thoughts and show you. Okay, so here we are. We've uh, filtered the searches for just Weavile over the past couple weeks. Uh, we know what Boyd did, right? That's at the top of the list there. That's what he brought into Lille. But how about a couple of these? This one was actually just like either yesterday or like earlier today. Second place here with Weavile. Look at this set. This is low kick knockoff, triple axle figure. I almost forgot Weavile got triple axle. But that's another way that you can potentially break Sash too, right? And that's really strong into Dragonite as well. You, you use the first triple axle, break the multi-scale. Then after that, then that's when you go for the KO. So that's also pretty interesting in itself. Uh, and then, like I said, you got knockoff and fake out here, just like Incineroar, right? So, and then after that, your last slot here is the low kick. Now, this means, obviously, no protect, okay? But that's okay. You do have Terra Ghost here if things want to fake out into you. But this is like a Garganical team. This is a very interesting Garganical team. 7-1, okay? You got double fake out here with the Rillaboom and the Actually, triple fake out, right? This looks like it's protect the Goldango kind of deal, right? Especially with Garganical over here. Very interesting. Uh, I, I, you know, I'm not so sure about, uh, you know, some of those options. But again, it can work if you have the right position. So shout outs to uh, Didi Lamanis, right, for a cool result here. Now, how about this one? This one's a little bit more standard with the Arc Rain, and yeah, this is kind of what I had it envisioned. Okay, so you've got Weavile Arc, right, with the Power Herb set, no Assault Vest, right? It's not. It's, it's a sturdy set, you, even though you're on the Rain team, uh, and then you get Protect. And then Basque Legion has the Mystic Water with Swift Swim, a Scarf Goldango with Trick, and then we got the Polyrath over here. Okay, okay, yeah, I respect it. I see it. I see the vision. Again, uh, you got Ice Shard, Knockoff, Ice Spinner. Again, another very standard set. You get to have Protect here, so no Fake Out. Okay, no Beat Up Eater. You are the sturdy set, so this is still another way to uh, consider running the Weavile. And then even down here at 6-1 from Mr. Blaze Kick. Okay, Fake Out, Ice Spinner, Knockoff, Upper Hand. Okay, again, you you are the faster, and then you can kind of deny another opponent for, for going for some priority move there. So that's pretty cool in itself. Uh, but this is Life Orb Basque Legion. It specs Goldango. You got both Murkrow and Pelipper on the same team over here. I've seen that a few times. Uh, and then Arkelinon over here. Again, uh, I noticed that there's like no option for, or no idea to even like try and beat up. It's okay. Like you don't have to necessarily commit to the beat up. Okay, if, if you don't think that Weavile fits that description here with Arkeladen, then you don't necessarily have to do it. But uh, I, if I were to do it, I would I would try and go for the beat. I might as well, right? Get a little bit of variance out of your Weavile, all things considered. How about this one down here? Same, looks like the same kind of cores here with Pelipper, Arc, and Vascular Legion. Now we've got the Nylet. There's the beat up. Okay, so there we go. We got beat up Weavile instead of Mousehold going for the beat up. Uh, and then we have Amoongus over here. The only thing here is this... This, this might do a, so, some damage here into my Annihilate, right? So I guess there's where your your Fairy Tamer comes into play. But honestly, like, it's still, like, okay. You know, it's not a huge thing. I do like the Amoongus, you know, on these teams. You know, Arc, Pelipper, Amoongus, Basket Legion. I think those four a lot of times can just win you a lot of different games. The only thing that I would do here is probably just put Goldango. That would be my Ghost type if I had to do something like this. But uh, to each their own. This does have Taunt. Again, another move that Weavile can definitely... Uh, make good use here all right then down here look at this one this is the other uh variant that i was talking about here you got the doug idea with dragonite ursaluna and actually it's not even doug it's dragonite ursaluna but no goldango we have arkeladen here we have pelipper here 
Okay, but no gold dangle. It's actually just the Sidui over here with the haze. Oh okay, yeah, so that's pretty cool. Then you've got low kick tailwind D Knight over here, multi skills. So this is a scarf Pelipper. Okay, with weather ball, icy wind, and muddy water. Look at look at this Pelipper set. I haven't seen this one, but this also makes sense. Like I'm not gonna lie. Uh, like if it were me, I'd probably just you know toss this and put gold dango here and put haze on this guy on the dragon knight. That's what I would do. But all things considered, like you, you can definitely do that too. Like, you know, you don't have to run Scarf Pelipper too. Like you can even put Tailwind back on this and then just take this out and, you know, run something else. But ideally, like you can definitely run these five and then just have a, a uh, Goldango in this slot. And then you have a Weavile uh, Doug idea with, uh, you know, th this kind of stuff. Like Ursa Luna and Arteladin together is actually quite strong. So that's something that you have to think about moving forward too. Like even this last one down here, uh, this one has the Sinisha stuff. Again, that's what that's what also Mr. Boyt was doing. Uh, so if you just take a look at this last one over here. So uh, it's actually Talonflame and Arc, okay, but no Pelipper. Look at this. Again, Triple Axel, Beat Up, Knock Off, Fake Out. So you can still do this stuff, right? And then here's the Arc. Uh, no, you know, Pelipper. But again, uh, it's still fine. Like you don't necessarily have to always click Electro Shot. You still got Dragon Pulse, Snarl, and Body Press. And if you're running Beat Up, then you're definitely going to be clicking Body Press more times than some of these other moves here. But this is another different way uh, to consider it. But it, it's it's pretty clear. Like, you have some options and what you can do, but most uh, common way is to at least slap this onto uh, the Arc Rain team and start putting pressure against those terrains by taking full advantage of the Ice Spinner stuff. Okay, so let's centralize the build and let's look at... Uh, putting Weavile on an Arkelid and Rain team. Okay, so just to round out some of this stuff, like again, I will go with the Basque Legion, and Basque Legion right now is just so strong. And it's not even like Swift Swim necessarily. You know, these are still running around, but the latest trend is to really just do this adaptability uh, with the Choice Scarf here. And the whole idea is you don't necessarily have to rely on the Rain to outspeed things with your Basque Legion. Now you can play this thing out of Rain. And have the damage capabilities of a band okay and then still have a decent speed boost you know with the choice scarf okay you can still outspeed pretty much everything especially if you just go max max right this will outspeed whatever you want right sans the dragapult there but are you really afraid of dragapult uh when you can hit it hard you know with a, a super effective damage you know with last respects and and other things on your team like a weavile uh can do just fine into that as well so um, that being said, I think this last slot here, I just I just like Amogus, man. You know, the, like the, sh the Mushroom is very strong. The Mushroom gets support to this entire team. You get to heal your Ikelidon. You, you get to click Spore, okay? People are afraid of Spore, okay? And then at the same time, you know, that gives you space uh, for the Goldango to set up the nasty plot stuff, right? So from here, I think, you know, I, I kind of want to just go the, the, uh, the Ghost set here. And I will go Focus Sash, and I will go with the Fake Out Weavile, okay? So we got Fake Out here, and then after that, we've got Ice Spinner, right? Blow Up Terrain, and then we got Knock Off. So we still get Knock Off and Fake Out, just like in Sonor. But now we get to remove Terrain from Indeedees and Rillabooms, and that's important too. And then after this, then we can go with the option for Beat Up into our own Arkeladen, if we want to do that. Otherwise, if you don't, you can definitely do Protect here, or you can still definitely do something like this uh, with the Ice Shard. This is still like totally fine, all things considered. It, it depends on you. So we try both, honestly. Uh, but for us, you know, I was using Beat Up uh, and it, it, it ended up being okay in like some scenarios. The Gold Dango here, uh, I like Life Orb Gold Dango. Uh, uh, you know, you can go uh, Metal Coat there to each their own. Either way, you know, Make It Rain is coming on this. So is Shadow Ball, and then we have the Nasty Plot, and then we have the Protect here. I like Terra Water Goldango. I like Terra Dragon Goldango. I like Terra Steel Goldango. I, I don't think those are bad Terras at all. I think any of them are very good. Just depends on what you want to do uh, with your idea, okay? Um, Arc with the Assault Vest here is still very strong. Stamina Boost uh, with Terra Grass. Again, get around those Amoonguses. You know, get around the Blood Moons now. Uh, the, the Earth Powers are hurting again. There was a brief time where we didn't have to worry about that. Now we got to worry about it. Uh, but uh, that means we have to kind of make a choice when we do EV spreads here. Do you want to EV for the Sneezer or do you want to EV for the Blood Moon? Uh, and you can still technically do both. And I'll show you exactly what I mean when the time comes. 
Okay, so flash cannon over here, electro shot, uh, and then of course the body press over here. Okay, Pelipper here. Uh, again, just bring the rain out. Uh, just, just you know, if this is getting the sash, then just put the cover cloak on this. Okay, uh, and then just go Terra Grass here also uh, with their electro shots at least for one turn, and you know still go max mass. Honestly, like you can still go max mass. Weather Ball, Hurricane Tailwind, uh, and then just simple protect over here. And like, there's nothing wrong with going like max speed here. Uh, and even though you don't have any bulk uh, with something like a Covert Cloak, it's okay. Uh, as long as I can at least set my weather, that may be all I need out of Pelipper, all things considered. Over here, standard set, Wave Crash, Last Respects, Aqua Jet, and Flip Turn. Now, what you can also technically do sometimes is, I've seen this, you can forgo the Aqua Jet. You can go Terra Blast here, and you can go Terra Fighting. Uh, and this will blow up the King Gambit. Uh, and, you know, because King Gambit just wants to click a Sucker Punch. But you could definitely do something like this and blow it up. I have seen this and it was kind of interesting. I think we saw this in the Buenos Aires special events. I did. I think I did see that and I thought it was interesting. So it's something that you can definitely consider um, if you want to try it out yourself. But otherwise, you can definitely just still go with the Terra Grass uh, Terra type. Uh, with the aqua jet stuff okay after that the among us uh again with regenerator and then the citrus bay over here uh is still fine you know again terra water very standard shroom uh rage powder uh pow pollen puff there we go and then spore and then clear smog that's rage okay rage powder all right yeah and you know this is this is as standard of an art team as it gets the only difference here is that there's a weevil over in incineroar but again weevil still has tools that Incineroar does not, and I don't get to actually prop the find or be scared of it. Um, so, and, you know, I still get another good, solid physical attacker on this team uh, besides my Basket region here. So this is what, this is what I propose. This is what's, like, easiest in terms of testing it out. And when I did, it was pretty okay. Uh, I think when I played about 19, 20 games, I think I went 15 and 4. So overall, like, it was pretty solid. I... Honestly, like Basque Legion and, and Rain is just really, really strong. I didn't bring Weavile to every single game, obviously. I think I brought it to about five or six. But when I did, it, it ended up being like, okay. And you know, that's what you need out of a niche Pokemon. You don't need to bring it to every game. You just need it to do that one job that it's supposed to do when you do bring it. Okay, so let's do some EVs here. Uh, again, I want to be able to outspeed Sneezer stuff. So just go like max here. Honestly, this is all you need for that. But at this point, just go max. It's totally fine. And then just dump the rest here into um, HP here. Uh, the Arc... Okay, so here's what I mean by the Arc Keladin set. Uh, so this is our our Sneasler damage calc here. So what we like to do is just go about 107. Okay, go to the second bump here in Modest Nature. And then put about 124 investments uh, in, our, in our defense, right? And then this is enough to survive the close combat from a Sneasler. Now, the question is, is this enough to survive the blood moon so let me show you something here on the pokemon damage calc all right if i put that set here you know with my arc Keladin, okay if i do that and if i put blood moon here okay and i won't put life orb on it i am going to put uh the assault vest because that is the most common blood moon uh right now so i'm gonna put 252 on the blood moon here i'm gonna take off the life orb just put assault vest or just take it off entirely uh because again that's not really affecting its damage uh, but look at this. If I have 252, 2524, all right, with the assault vest, look at this. The earth power does not KO, even though I don't have any investment in my special defense from my Arkeladin. And this is one of the interesting drawbacks of the assault vest variant. You don't pick up this KO if they have the assault vest and they are 252, 252. Now, if they had the life orb, okay, that's a different story. Okay, because now, now you do pick up the KO if you don't have any investment and if you were going for uh, the sneeze with damage count. Now you do pick up, but if you don't have the life orb, then you miss out on it and the Arkeladin gets to live the tell the tale. So honestly, you can still keep the spread like this uh, if you really want to, or uh, you can make some minor adjustments and say, you know what, I, I, I already live, I, you know what, I, I can just make this a little bit faster. So you can still do something like this where you can just reinvest uh, your speed and just go like up to here in 120 and then just pop uh, a couple of points here in the defense. And that's really all you want 
out of your Arkelidon, right? You could just do something like this. You give up the Sneezer Calc, but you are a little bit faster and you are much faster than, you know, the normal Arkelidon. So if that is something that you want to do, uh, you can definitely do that. Or you can drop some of this, okay? Drop some of this special attack and invest a little bit more in your special defense like this, right? And this is also like, okay, all right? So uh, if you're still afraid of that, Damage Calc, you can still do this and then have at least a little bit of a roll into that. So if I just put about 84 here, this will help the roll a little bit in, against Life 4. But, you know, again, not really. 81% still, like, not so great. All right. So uh, you can kind of almost scrap that idea. But, you know, like I said, they're not really using the Life 4 variant as much. It's more or less the Assault Vest variant. But there are still a few Life 4 ideas running around. So what you can do here, honestly, just... Dump the rest here. You, you can keep the 36 attack. I think that's still like okay. And put a little bit more into your your spin up. I think this much is like totally fine. You know, at least put the you know, have the even number uh for the assault vest set. I think that's like okay. And then you know, keep the even number for defense for your stamina boost. And this is like still totally fine. So it's a little bit faster of an Arkeladid uh than what we normally do, all right, with some special defense. But anyway. Uh, back here to Pelipper, so we already did that. Basque Legion, like I said, you can still go uh, Adamant tier now. You have the Scarf. Uh, you are doing a lot of damage with the adaptability, so, you know, this is still, like, okay. The Amoongus, uh, you know, you can still go Sassy. You can go Relax. Either way, it's still, like, okay, uh, depending on what you want to do on your Mushroom. Either way, I'm still going to go, like, zero speed. Put an even number here in the HP stat. Go right about here, Okay. To defense and then just put spin f like this which you can also do technically if you really want to you can go terra fairy on this and redirect dragon type attacks redirect scale shot and this way it just doesn't do anything so you can always just do something like this and you know amoongus has had a lot of success in the past uh with uh terra fairy you know again we, we got three grass types on this okay all right but th this is it so like you could definitely do something you know, along these lines, some very generally easy spreads to try and test something out on ladder. If you want to make the arc a little bit stronger, you know, just in terms of damage, you can definitely do that. But in terms of what we want out of Weavile, I think this is a pretty good set on this particular team alone. Okay, so I'm going to show you a couple test games and let's see how uh, the team functions. All right, so this is some weird Blastoise Arkeladon rain team, you know, with the charge bug there, obviously wanting to click you know, like uh, water spout stuff. There is a Rillaboom and a Sinistra here. So like, I understand the Sinistra are Pelipper stuff, but everything else besides the Rillaboom, I guess, I, you know, I don't know, re relatively niche. But what I want to show you here is the interaction with Pickpocket, okay? So here's the arc and here's the Weavile that I decided to lead with. And he's gonna go with Pelipper here. And of course he's going to lead with uh, also Arkella. So the rain is set, that's fine here. What I wanna do is at least fake out the Pelipper first and just try and take it off the board. So here's my Electro Shot. I outspeed the Pelipper, so I already know that it's modest. Okay, so that's a good removal there. There's the Body Press. He gets me the Sash. Okay, but I get to pickpocket the Assault Vest. And that's important, right? Because I consume the item and now I can just take it what he has. So here comes Rillaboom. He can always fake out and pressure me here or Grassy Glide. So I'm just going to go into Pelipper first. Save the Weeba for later. There is the Fake Out. All right, this is where like Protect sometimes is really good. Just chip the Rillaboom a little bit. You know, plus one Flash kind of still does a lot of damage. All right, there's the Electro Shot. He went into the Arkeladon here. All right, so he gives me a Stamina Boost, which is fine. And now um, I can start going for the other side. I'm not going to touch that arc here. All right, I just want to get rid of this Rillaboom now. So there's the Hurricane. And now I can also just click Body Press. That's good damage into the arc there. So this way I get something on the board for it. And there's his Body Press, still okay. Uh, now I'm plus two, right? So now I can start doing some good damage with uh, this body press and uh, obviously a little bit of recovery from Rillaboom afterwards. So he's going into Sinisha here, gets a little bit more recovery. He has redirection support. Uh, so now we force the Terra out of the Sinisha, right? So Hurricane still does some damage, but obviously not enough. And then there's the Flash Cannon. I thought he would Terra the Arc here. So good Terra Water from the Sinisha or even like Terra Fairy, but yeah. So Draco Meteor takes me out. Okay, but this is fine. Like again, at, after this, I still have uh, my my Basque Legion in the end game here. Okay, so now I bring in the Arc. I'm sorry, I bring in the Weavile at this point. And, you know, he does concede, uh, but... Oh, wait, no. He doesn't actually concede. All right, so this is that Backscalibur team that's running around. Again, this is Juan Garcia's team. Uh, and it is the solo dozo stuff. So 
couple of leads that you can even do into this is like Sneezer, Amoongus, or even like Goldengle is pretty strong into this. You know, yes, there is a Magmar, but you don't really have to worry about Magmar so much if you can just protect your own Goldengle with something like a Pelipper, uh, for example, right? So um, that being said, uh, I do want it to at least see what he would try. So there's the Sneezer, there's Vaxxeal. I kind of know he would do that. So he's probably threatening, you know, coaching stuff. This is where I have the Amoongus, right? So I just want to fake out the backs first. All right. And even if he did get off one coaching now, that's okay. I don't want him to do too much. So I'm just going to sport the Sneezer here. And this is fine, right? So now he ice shards my Amoongus trying to get some damage. I don't think he needed to do that, but he did it anyway. So I click knockoff, go by loaded dice. Okay. And you know what that means? That means you go to sleep too. And now you can't click your loaded dice. And now he just says, you know what? I'm not playing this game. I'm just going to click forfeit. That's why I like Amoongus along with Weavile. Like Amoongus is so good. And it just really gives Rain that defensive backbone that it can do uh, to slow the game down a little bit. And that's what Amoongus did here. All right, this is another one of those interesting Blood Moon teams. The old school Ferrograph Whimsicott idea. There is Rillaboom and Magmar. And there's a Sylveon here for some reason. I don't know why. But again, another game where something like Weavile looks really good here, especially if I can remove terrain and I can pressure the Ursaluna with an ice move as well as the Ferrograph, right? And there is the Ferrograph. There is the Whimsicott. I've never seen this lead. So he goes into Magmar here, interesting enough. So I'm just going to Rage Pot here because, you know, I was a little scared. But there's the Ice Spinner. And he goes for Trick Room, right? So now my Amoongus has an advantage. There's the Whimsicott. That's fine. But this is one of those Vital Spirit Magmars, right? He's not the Flame Body that some of the others are going for. So good on him. But I get to remove the Covert Cloak from the Whimsicott. All right. He has an advantage right now, right? Because there is Trick Room up. So there's Fake Tears. Still okay, he removes my Weavile, so I didn't really get a chance to do anything. He played around it, so good uh, good play from him. But here's my Amoongus. I'm going to bait that, go into Pelipper here, and, you know, just try and remove this Whimsicott, right? Because I can't just have it keep clicking, um, you know, fake tears and just have this Magmar do too much damage. So goodbye, Whimsicott. All right, one turn of Trick Room left. Still fine. All right, he goes into Ursaluna now. This is where I need to Terra, right? Because like we said, we need to Eevee for this. So there's the Earth Power. We live it. Thank you, Terra Grass. Okay. And he was the Life Orb variant. So that's the lesser common one. Okay. So that means after Trick Room, we get to put pressure. But uh, we were smart with our Pelipper choice and we just removed it right now without even waiting. So there's no more Trick Room. And that means that was his last bit of offense. So he has no choice but to forfeit there. So I didn't get really too much out of the Weavile in this, but I did create the pressure that forced him to switch. And then in the end, my Arc and Pelipper were in a much better spot. Okay, so this is uh, one of the older sand teams, right? We made a sand team almost just like this. We put a, uh, a Dragonite slash Salamence, you know, with Tailwind uh, in that slot where there's a Kilowattril, right? But again, and competitive, you don't want to get Intimidate Span, right? So I kind of get it uh, why he did that. But in the end, Rain uh, still looks really good against a lot of what he has. So yeah, so here we go. He's going to go with T-Tar Excadrill. This is fine because we're going to go with R mode too. We're going to go with Arc. And we're going to go with Basque Legion. I can always pivot the Pelipper now. So I don't do it immediately. I want to see what he does. So because I have the flip turn option, I know his T-Char is a salt vest. I can get my Pelipper in now. I thought he would Terra flying, but he didn't. He went for Terra Ghost. That's a Terra that you don't really don't see, right? But to each their own, right? There's the knockoff. There goes my cloak. But the Excadro doesn't have the, the weather now. He has to go into Sinisha here. So I just want to protect my Pelipper now. There's another Iron Head, but this is still like, okay, right? Because now I can still click Electro Shot, right? And still deal some damage into the Sinisha. So I don't want to lose my Pelipper yet because then I'll lose the Weather War later. Let me just go into our trusty Amoongus, right? And let the Amoongus do something here. So let me get the Sinisha off the board now, all right? I go back to neutral. This is okay. Getting that thing off is better than not getting it off. There's the Watril again. Uh, we resist that Thunderbolt. This is fine. He goes into my berry. It is a Life Orb Watchel. And he gets a crit on my Amoongus. A little unfortunate. But look at this. Now we start putting pressure and damage onto the Extra Jolt. It's a very weak Tyranitar in the end. Basque Legion looks really good here. He goes into it now. But that's fine. Because again, we outspeed the Watchel because we are Scarf. And that was the main difference there. We do not die to the Watchel because we outsped it. We had the Scarf. And that's the main benefit of having Basque Legion outside of its weather. So now you guys know. Now I get to put it in the weather. Now I get full weather control. Tyranitar cannot do anything, obviously, because he has no protect. He's just an assault vest. 
And now from here, it's just a three on one. This little Excadrill can only do so much. And now he just drops. This one is that Paul Chua variant, the Gabriel Agati ideas, you know, with the double Dragon Core with Dragonite and Garchomp. Okay. And, you know, it's the scale shot. It, it may not even still be the scale shot. I think it's like the Assault Vest set. Uh, but either way, he does have his own nine tails for the weather control, Moongus Gambit. We know what this is supposed to do. That's fine. That being said, you know, Weavile does really well against both those dragons. So if he does lead it, which they always do like this, uh, the Weavile looks really good here. So now he's forced to tear one of them. Uh, I want to try and fake out and just break the multi-scale first. Okay. And then Earthquake does a lot. Uh, but again, just gets me to Sash. And now I put the Chomp to sleep, right? Because Amoongus is so good. And now um, he does click Extreme Speed there. This is where I could have Terra Ghosted. Um, so that one's on me, but I wanted to see what he would do. But now I get to still go into our Keladin there and he has to pivot out. It's a sleeping chomp. It's fine. Um, because now I can get my weather. And again, he has his multi-scale broken. He already committed the flying type. So that means his Dragonite just gets absolutely melted by the Arc Keladin, right? And again, he still has a sleeping chomp there. So good job, Amoongus. He wakes up now, but he goes for Dragon Claw rather than... Uh, the earthquake stuff so that means goodbye Insin with the weather ball and that also means uh draco can get uh can just remove the chomp here and that's really all that he has there right so interesting choice there to claw the arkeladin rather than uh earthquake uh instead okay so this is like the charizard sun stuff but again not, not a huge deal as long as you have uh the weavile to fake up the zard and pressure it with spore you're good because again these zards they don't have protect they always run like a scarf or a a a choice specs variant so that's fine as long as you can like mitigate that then the rest of these options they don't really matter a whole lot you have plenty uh for everything else okay so that being said he goes with the jump bluff he goes with the zard that means the torkoal's in the back you know he's gonna switch either one slot i always like to do plays like that so i'm gonna go weave all amoongus here there is the torkoal so he cho chooses to switch out the zard there so fake out goes into the torkoal slot and he sleep powders me and i sleep powder the torkoal so we have both pokemon taking a nap here uh but uh and he goes back into the zard right but that's fine and he actually does a double swap here into both the gashadon um i wanted to spore the other stuff but again it's a safety goggles gashadon i've never seen that so i'm gonna have to reposition here we're gonna go into the pelipper so the zard can't completely destroy me um there's the heat wave uh he gets a little crit there um, he yawns my Amoongus, but again, the Spore into the Zart is exactly what we wanted, right? So, now he goes back into the Torkoal to get back the Weather Control, but, uh, the difference now is he's got a couple Pokemon, you know, sleeping because Amoongus, again, is so good. We get the Raw Hurricane in the Sun, we get the Confusion, right? Solar Power taking Chip, um, he wakes up, he still bypasses the Confusion, and that's unfortunate for me, uh, because the Pelipper does drop in this sense. All right, we do good damage into the Torkoal, uh, but it is unfortunate that he, he was able to bypass both the Sleep and the Confusion. But the Zard is gone, the Torkoal is still asleep, the Jump Puff comes back, that thing can still sleep. So I have to like reposition a little bit. There's the Gashadon, that's fine. All I really wanted to do was trying to resist this, but it is a Leaf Storm. Um, usually they don't really want an attack, it's normally like a, a, a four move, non attacking Jump Puff, but I get this wrong, so I have to you know, suffer losing the Basque Legion in that sense. But my Weavile does wake up. We get to nuke the Jump Pluff, so that's good. All right, there's another Ice Beam. Now, what I can also consider now is to... Uh, I thought he would hit the Weavile. I can knock off the Gashadon and then just knock off the uh, the Goggles there, but the Torkoal still sleep. I don't want that thing waking up, so let's just nuke that now and just make it so that the Gashadon is the only one left. The Ice Beam is not doing enough damage. He gets me to my Barry, and this is where I can deal some damage there, you know, to the Gashadon. So what I should have done here was actually just click knockoff, remove the goggles and try and sleep it. Um, my Amoongus actually hangs on. I thought it would die, but uh, yeah, I just wanted to get one more attack in there. But uh, there's the Ice Spinner to finish things off. But again, it was just all about, you know, bypassing the sleep stuff. But Amoongus did a lot here. It slowed down the sun mode and it allowed me a little bit more flexibility uh, in the end game. So Weavile was able to close this out. All right, last one here. This was like the most, this was the longest one. This one took 16 turns just because of how much positioning I had to go through. And, you know, because I started off somewhat poorly here. So instant P2, Blood Moon or Saluna, there's a Sneasler there and then Pre-Marina. So he's got a good Fire Water Grass Core going there. 
and he's got a decent trick room here. Um, so I'm just gonna try and go with the Weavile and the Amoongus mode here into his P2 mode, which is exactly what he leads. He also goes with Sneasler. Um, so he goes into Incin, so that probably has safety goggles. He doesn't want to fall asleep here. I fake out the, his own Sneezer, again, Weavile being the faster fake out user, and I spore into a goggles set. So that's something to consider. So now he goes into Rillaboom, right? He gets the Grassy Twin. He brought the, the, the fake out boys to this, right? So I knock off the Incin. Uh, the goggles is gone. All right, he party shots the Weavile, which means he's going back into the P2, and now we get to spore this thing. So I guess he's okay with that. The Rillaboom ends up uh, just going for a wood hammer next turn. So I just go into the Pelipper now. I don't want to just completely die yet. Let me remove the Violite on this Porygon. There's the wood hammer. The Weavile is now down to Sash. But look at this. I get to steal the Assault Vest, and that was important, uh, stealing that. Because now I can potentially KO him with the Hurricane. Um, so that's exactly what I go for here. I want to go for a Mungus here. All right, there's the Hurricane. It doesn't kill. I'm so surprised, <laughs> right, that it didn't kill Bulk. That, that thing had so much Bulk, I guess. I guess the Grassy Train really saved it. If I picked up that KO, it would have been a lot easier. But this P2 has E-Webs, and that was the, that's the tech of choice, right? Because my Pelipper just dropped the Porygon E-Webs. I've never seen that tech, honestly. And it almost wins in the game here, because I have a Basque Legion here. I did not bring the Arkeladid into this matchup. So I kind of knew he would switch the instant here. So I just want to re-pivot out and go back into the Weavile here. All right, and thankfully he just hits the Amoongus instead of going for the Weavile. So there goes my Barry, and now the Porygon takes another nap. Okay, the instant is still vulnerable, but again, no Pelipper means uh, it's a little bit harder, right? So now I have to just maneuver with these pieces. So there's a Protect, right? Uh, he reads my Fake Out, now he understands. And I kind of just... Uh, you know, again, I, I wanted to spore there. I guess what I could have done was just heal myself, all things considered. But, you know, this is this is in hindsight. There's my Basque Legion now. And there's a Dire Claw. And he gets the sleep. Oh, man. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta be kidding me, right? So I returned with the sleep of my own. And this is basically like all sleep turns, right? So there's my Weavile. I'm pivoting out. I'm repositioning myself. Porygon goes for the E-Webs. My Weavile hangs on by the slimmest of margins. All right, and I can just put this thing back to sleep, all right? And now the Sneezer has to take a nap himself. So all I have to do is just keep chipping away at the Sneezer and, you know, just uh, heal myself back up with a Pollen Puff, I, oh, you know, and here I am, right? So there's a Rage Powder. I want to just redirect it. There's a Coaching. He goes into the P2, and he guess he's going down, you know, with Glory. This P2 is plus two attack, plus one defense. I need to find a way to clear smog that thing. Uh, because I need to somehow break it. So I'm going to go into my Sleeping Basket Legion. This probably was a throw. I'm not sure, but it's sleeping anyway. So what else can I do, really? I can still put the Instant to sleep. So he had me in a decent pin there. So I didn't really have too much of a choice. I want to just fake out the Porygon here. All right, and that's what ends up happening. I could have also put this back to sleep, right? And then just continue clear smogging, but uh, I wanted to clear smog it first. So in hindsight, I think that may have been a better play just to sleep it first and then clear smog it. Um, but I didn't do that. So now I have to just wither down the P2 and I do pick up the KO. So now it's just instant and the instant stays asleep. I'm going to heal back my Weavile, right? So uh, then I just go for another Ice Spinner there. Just again, trying to wither it down. He goes for the Flare Blitz instead of a knockoff there, which is an interesting choice because now I put this thing back to sleep. And that's pretty much it. So now the opponent forfeits. Uh, it was, I, I'm surprised he didn't go for the knockoff there. He probably would have just KO'd me and then would have won the game. But uh, yeah, I <laughs> he had me in a decent pin, but I was able to escape all things considered. All right, so there's the team one more time. Again, you got to see some pickpocket interactions. Uh, knockoff uh, on safety goggles with Spore is really good. And then Goldengo, Arkelet, and Basculation. These guys are just very, very strong. All things considered, like you don't even have to bring Weavile all to your games. You could just bring these five and you're just kind of chilling from there. Okay, it's a very familiar rain core, but Weavile will have some good use. Uh, again, it's it's another one of those niche mons that uh, can do very well if you put it in the right position, especially right now with so much Indeedee Sneezer stuff running around. I think Weavile uh, can definitely come out to play uh, for at, at this moment in this time. Okay, let me know what you think of Weavile. Let me know what you've tried already. Uh, we're getting closer to the weekend for the loss. Los Angeles to the Latin America International Championship. So stay tuned for that. Uh, but yeah, we'll be back with another video in the next one. Peace out and have a good one.